Paul on stage, uh, Urban Koisen, he's a senior vice president at E.ON, managing technology and innovation. Welcome. Thank you, Jan. So, hello everybody. Um, coming here at, uh, I think, three challenges. One was Jan when I accepted to participate in the agenda, and I saw it was Friday afternoon. I expected to have a bilateral chat with you instead of having an audience. Um, second was, as you just mentioned, um, arriving here on time, had the opportunity to spend a week uh, with startups and venture capitals in uh, Europe and Silicon Valley. So I just arrived and unfortunately couldn't follow the other presentations. So in case I miss something, uh, I have to apologize. And third is, of course, uh, trying to present something to you, you do not know up to now without disclosing too much of internal strategies we have. And this, of course, is a challenge I try to, to face right now. Um, Jan just mentioned I'm working for E.ON. My background is physics, and I'm heading a team we call Technology Innovation, which is taking care of um, all the activities within the E.ON group, which do not have a business case today. So covering all things from research, development, piloting, demonstration projects, and uh, once we have a business model and a business case, then we hand over those activities to our business units to make things really happen. And um, content-wise, we cover the whole scope from large-scale generation, small-scale generation, smart grids, retail activities. Um, so the whole range of, of uh, uh, things we're doing, we typically say we cover everything but typical IT. Uh, whereas IT means development of uh, data systems, others. Uh, this is not in the scope of uh, what we do. Um, working for E.ON and being as E.ON here in the uh, Eco Summit, um, and the title is um, Cleaner and Better Utility. Just two short slides on uh, what E.ON is doing, because there's a tendency that E.ON is linked to nuclear power, to large-scale generation with coal, uh, gas, and others. But um, just to make you aware of this, uh, E.ON is uh, one of the biggest investors in renewable energy. It's uh, mainly large-scale or industrial-scale renewables, um, which is um, kind of, we say, seven to eight billion euros we invested uh, over the last four to five years, as mentioned, mainly in, in wind. Um, and uh, this uh, gives them kind of significant footprint in renewables for uh, E.ON. It sometimes is not that much recognized because our investments in wind up to now were mainly in the US. Uh, we are starting offshore investments in uh, the North Sea in Germany right now, and our solar investments were mainly in Spain, in southern Spain and in Italy. So from a German perspective, it's not that much recognized what E.ON is doing in the sector of uh, renewables. Uh, and this uh, will continue, so our plans are to uh, significantly go on with our investments in renewables. You just uh, see the kind of um, share of uh, different technologies we want to invest in. This all is, as I mentioned, um, typically industrial scale renewable generation. But this is not um, everything we want to do in the kind of new energy world. We believe that things will significantly change. They are changing already. And what are the things we feel uh, changing the energy world is uh, partly driven by trends. Um, you all know those trends, uh, we call them mega trends, which are responsible for uh, changes in the energy world as well. And I think the, the two or three really very important trends which changes uh, the world is one is on the technical and the technology side is new technologies coming up uh, and um, more or less eating up the scaling effect of large-scale technology. Taking the example of fuel cells, you can put a fuel cell in your basement with an efficiency of 60% plus, which is as much as the top efficiency of a large-scale CCGT gas-fired power plant. If you look at uh, PV technology, again, you have more or less eat up the whole scaling effect of large-scale technology. There's some, and, and when you, you mounted it, and some, some, some equipment needed uh, still there, but mainly it eats up the kind of scaling effect. The same is true for batteries. You can simply have a modular system where scaling effects do not matter, um, at least as much as in the past. 
Um, of course, the whole uh, CO2 discussion is a, a key driver, at least here in Europe. If you talk to people in the US, there are just very few um, caring about CO2. Um, most of the people are now on the kind of shale gas hype, and uh, sometimes it's a bit scaring to, to follow how few people in the US really care about uh, CO2 and global warming. Um, there's another trend, not just on the technology side, uh, doing things different in the future. It's uh, on the customer side as well, customer perception. Um, people uh, really love to kind of be part of the energy system. Uh, we perceive that uh, much more things happen locally, regional. So um, this is a trend driven by customers which, of course, has an impact on uh, the energy system. So um, taking, uh, again, a German example, so many consumers really putting a PV on the rooftop and by this becoming from consumer to prosumer. So this all will change uh, the energy landscape significantly. And um, just uh, some kind of key beliefs and uh, what are uh, the, the consequences out of this is, at least what we within E.ON believe is, um, we believe that there will be at scale renewable generation, so we believe that offshore wind, for instance, uh, will play a role in the future energy world. Um, and um, there might be and there will be uh, a role for uh, dispatchable low carbon generation, so we do not believe that at least on a European or global scale, large-scale generation will completely disappear. Um, but uh, the kind of what we call distributed energy will part will take over a significant share of the whole system. Um, what is one of the most important things, and uh, Germany is a kind of showcase for this, is um, that uh, having a significant share of renewable volatile generation, in Germany it will be mainly wind and sun, um, interestingly to me is always that uh, in Germany uh, there's 44% of the worldwide PV installations in Germany and in Bavaria we have more PV than in the whole North America. Um, uh, this, um, this will lead to a completely different setup. And assuming we have an 80% share of renewables in Germany in, in, uh, in a certain amount of time, this will mean um, that um, things will work different. And it will work different in a way that we no more follow the demand with our generation sites, which happened in the past, but it will be uh, a kind of decoupling of generation and demand. Because we generate when wind is blowing and sun is shining, and we have to decouple this um, generation from the demand. And there are two things uh, which we believe uh, will um, support this to decouple it. One is um, the whole storage activities. So storage is one of uh, the key activities. If we talk about storage, we kind of discuss it in two layers. Uh, we believe that there will be one layer we call large-scale storage. This might be pump hydro, which is nice, but uh, you all know sites are limited, so uh, this cannot play a major role when it comes to 80% renewables in the system. Uh, we believe, and we work on this, that um, power to gas is an option. I do not know if there was a presentation on this, so I do not have to kind of um, uh, further elaborate on it. So uh, we are building a, a demo plant right now, which will start operation uh, end of 2012, beginning of 2013. It's a two megawatt uh, power to gas plant uh, with no methanation, but direct infeed of the hydrogen into the gas system. And people normally approach me and are saying, well, this is such a lousy efficiency, why do you do this? Um, uh, what I feel is the, the overall potential is so huge. And what I like to, to use as an example, if you imagine we have um, in 2020 one million e-cars in Germany and we plug all the batteries to the grid, like vehicle to grid, and this storage capacity of these one million e-cars equals to the height of my body. Then the capacity of the existing gas system in Germany has the capacity which equals to the height of the Mount Everest. Means um, you can store about 15,000 megawatt offshore wind for one year by power to gas in the existing gas infrastructure, which is a huge amount, and that's why we think it's worthwhile following this. So this is layer number one, it's a large scale storage. 
Uh, layer number two is the kind of small-scale local regional storage, which will play a role um, on one hand in the grid business, so to overcome certain local congestions, battery will play a role, stationary battery. And second is uh, very local when it comes to, for instance, to residential customers. Um, so um, we believe that the combination of uh, PV and the battery could be a really disruptive combination for the residential customers. Um, there are so many people working on new battery technologies right now um, that I believe uh, we will see an ongoing decrease of cost and uh, this is something we really have to, to follow. So this is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to decouple generation demand. Storage is one issue we want to look at. And the second issue is what we call the, the flexible demand. So all the issues which are helpful to follow demand to the uh, generation. And uh, there are a lot of um, buzzwords around. So one is uh, smart home, demand response management, means to me all the activities which in an intelligent way using information technology, using data, uh, can be used to either adapt customer behavior or on the other hand uh, makes things following um, the, the generation pattern. Um, and uh, in this kind of scope, uh, E.ON has launched a lot of projects, starts with certain smart home activities, we are in uh, corporations with uh, telecom companies there. Um, we've started uh, initiatives on uh, demand response management, uh, cooperating with companies on this. So we believe that this will be something uh, we sometimes call a so uh, um, merit order of flexibility. So it means when it comes to the need to adapt the demand, we will see maybe like a merit order for generation today, we will see a merit order of flexibility, which finally means when it comes to flexibilization that storage will compete against smart home, will compete against demand response management, will compete against an open cycle gas turbine to all kind of do the, the balance needs in the system. I, have, I must admit I have no clue who will win that race, but uh, from a utility point of view it's important to kind of place several bets in this merit order list to uh, have the, the right technology in place when we know uh, how this uh, develops. And um, this all then uh, will lead to many more devices, energy-related devices in the system. Um, it will be hundreds of thousands of devices. If you imagine you, combine, you, you finally connect your energy devices in your home to the energy system, it will be hundreds of millions of devices. Um, people uh, tend to talk about the Internet of Things, uh, which will be part of the energy world as well. So um, all kind of combinations of information technology with energy technology, data, will play an enormous important role in this uh, new energy world. And this all, as I mentioned, um, having a very active customer, not just um, having a consumer which kind of uh, puts in the um, electric device in uh, the plug. Um, I've talked a lot about uh, electricity right now, uh, but if we talk about energy as a whole, of course we have to cover gas and especially heat. Uh, and this then heavily depends on the region where you are. Uh, in Central Europe, uh, heat is uh, the major kind of uh, need uh, for, for energy. So one of the additional key beliefs we have is that in the past we may have discussed a lot along electricity to electricity, gas to gas, heat to heat, and we will observe much more kind of crossings from electricity to gas, power to gas is one example, and for instance using heat as a storage. So if you look at uh, the storage options you have today, again taking the German example, buildings, heat storage in buildings is uh, one of the biggest potential you have, so heat uh, is a kind of storage option is an important thing as well. So this is just a kind of high-level journey of um, what uh, our key beliefs are where the system will develop. 
And um, we have set up uh, just that you have some insight how we do it. So we have set up a, a team, I just mentioned it, we call technology innovation, taking care of this, trying to find ideas externally and internally, and finally drive them forward to business. And uh, there's a team of uh, people, of course, being uh, part of that organization just to get an impression uh, how we did it. So we have uh, a dedicated team uh, at our headquarters in Düsseldorf taking care of certain things there. And we have um, um, kind of set up so-called, or we call it, E.ON Innovation Centers. Uh, those are uh, organizations uh, which are uh, responsible for certain parts in the technology arena. They're embedded in the business, but they are linked via kind of functional setup to an overall um, what we call TNI organization for the E.ON group. And this team is taking care of all the things running the projects we do. Uh, we have a, a scouting department uh, working with startups, working with venture capital funds, looking for new blue sky things. So this is, um, in a few words, our setup. And um, looking at the remaining two minutes, I would kind of leave that to the auditorium, auditorium in case there are any questions. Thanks for listening. and. Uh, I think there are further options to do questions uh, at uh, 4.30. I'll join the panel here, so further options to ask questions then. Thank you very much for listening for this kind of condensed, short run-through of E.ON's activities on technology innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you.